sure they're there? They're everywhere! Alright, well, so yeah, it's Halloween season, but you know, ghosts are not particular about Halloween. It's all the time. All and, and, Halloween, and apparently, all the time. And apparently, according to Gary, they just show up and start bullying you if they don't like you. Maybe. Well, Eric Stromer here, Cindy Dole. This is Home Wizards, where we uh, typically help you improve your home and improve your life. But I think it's, a, it's an extension as we get into the Halloween spirit. Um, we, every year, talk about, is your home haunted? And Gary Jansen's home has been in New York, and he's written this book called Holy Ghosts. He's just an everyday guy, an editor of religious books, and what do you know, something decides to uh, make its way into his home. Two ghosts, in fact, right, Gary? Uh, that's right. And so how did things really escalate? Well, you know, I think you know, over time, it was just, for us, it was, um, you know, one one incident stacked on top of the next incident and stacked on top of that. You know, and there was one frightening thing that I think kind of sent me off over the edge was when we were, when I was growing up, you know, our doorbell would ring for no reason at all. And, you know, yes, it could have been kids pranking, but we'd go to the door and there'd be absolutely no one there. And we don't live in a very crowded area. And you could pretty much see if there's someone, you know, hiding out. And, and there plenty of times where we'd run outside to see if there was anybody there. There's never anybody there. But again, we just wrote it off as pranksters. The, uh, but that was something that my mom always said. No, 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 it's not pranksters. It's 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 the spirit. You know, it's spirits trying to contact you. And um, so, right after my wife had given uh, birth to our second child, I'd come home that night. We were exhausted. The haunting had been going on for almost a year right now. And and I fall asleep. And I wake up around three o'clock in the morning to the sound of the doorbell ring. Mm. <laughs> and uh, and I am. Again, huge coward and paralyzed with like fear, like, no, nah, no, nah, I, I didn't hear that. Um, I was dreaming. And then I said, you know what, I'm just going to wait there, and uh, if it rings again, I'll check it. But that was just my imagination. I'm just freaking myself out. And then I waited like one Mississippi, two Mississippi. It was like <laughs> waiting, you know how you count, like you hear thunder and, or, or see lightning and, yeah. and, and then listen to thunder. And like on the third Mississippi, ding dong. And the freaking yeah. doorbell rang again. And I just remember thinking, I've had enough of this, ran downstairs, you know, and threw open the door, and there was no one there. And one of the creepiest things for me, and it, and it still is, is just the sound of a doorbell ringing in the middle of the night. And that freaked me out. I ran outside. There was nobody there. And could it have been prankster? It could have been. But the coincidence of it happening on the night my son was born, when I was home alone, you know, and, and, it, and it being something that that scared the wits out of me when I was a kid just made me, you know, that's when I actually reached out to Marianne Winkowski and said, you know what, uh, I need help here. And she's the gal that helped with the ghost whisperer, you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. So what was the final thing that really, the, the culmination, when it really all came together? What was the, the, the thing that happened? Well, you know, the thing was is that it, it went on for a little while. I, I mean, pretty much... I have to say that was probably the most frightening point. And then it got really, it went from being frightening to be really interesting because the information that Marianne gave me about who the spirits were, well, I needed to go out and investigate. So I did some investigating, actually went to the cemeteries where these, you know, ghosts possibly lived. And so many things started linking up just about, you know, where these people had passed away. Um, still, there's still a couple questions about exactly where the older uh, the woman lived. Um, but it seems to see that she lived, you know, pretty nearby, and 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 so these things you could, of course, I could be reading into it. But what was really interesting was was exploring these people's lives and and and, and tracking down. It became this big mystery of, of trying to figure out, you know, is it this person, and why is this one spirit so angry with me? And so the book does talk about the power of language, and you know, we say flipping things all the time. At least I do. Um, but can you actually? You know, can you can you end up accidentally cursing someone? You know, just from like being angry or or, or just running off at the mouth. Can those words, the, the, these negative words, actually have I don't know a, a power to either hold spirits back or or to bring down misfortune on others? So the book really goes into kind of the history of curses, and, and, and it could it be that every time that we yell at someone who cuts us off on the, on the freeway or the parkway, could we be inadvertently sending them a minor curse? Uh, you know, and the ancients used to believe that. They believed in the power of language to be able to 
hold spirits here or to let spirits go away and and um and that became a fascinating fascinating topic just to investigate and also to you know to see you know to see what what would happen when i finally use language you know to try to get them to go over the other side well gary let's get some input from a couple of guys who uh who speak to the other side i guess you could say aj barrera and ramiro ramirez uh they're on the nbc show called from beyond and before they had the whole TV gig, I mean, for years, you were both, I guess, doubters, but then you got into this because you have this sensitivity. Right, I, AJ? Absolutely. I was a complete skeptic of this work. Uh, my whole process was to debunk psychics, mediums, the paranormal. When I saw certain individuals on TV shows and stuff like that that were, you know, giving readings to people in the audience, and I got, thought, this is a bunch of BS. You know, they <laughs> place people in the audience, they tell them what to say, what uh -huh. to do. And so the more that I started researching this work of going to local libraries or my public library, which is the New Age section, it was like only like five books that were there, really, to be quite honest. And the more I started researching and going onto the internet, the more that I realized that um, I have this ability to be intuitive, to be sensitive. So the more that I started debunking this more, the more that I realized that I was more going down the right path of finding direction with them, um, spirit. And R Romero, you too? Yeah. That's right. As a Latino, I mean, we grew up with these stories, uh, La Llorona, El Cucuy, kind of similar to The Boogeyman. And we would constantly hear stories about my grandpa's, uh, my dad's grandpa's ranch being haunted. And every time we would visit this ranch, for some reason, I would always sense something there. It was a uh, energy that I wasn't able to fully comprehend myself until uh, as I grew older. And then I had a personal experience where my grandfather passed away and he came to my room. And I, really? at first I thought I was actually the one that was going crazy. Um, I shared this uh, story with my grandmother and she's like, you know what? It's happened. It, it's actually happened to me here in my own home. And See, when, when my parents passed away, I wanted them to come and visit me and it hasn't happened. I keep saying, come on, I want to see you and talk to you. You know, I guess you don't get to choose. Right. No, no. <laughs> and, well, I think what happens a lot with us because we have that mental thought of, uh, I believe what Gary was saying was uh, positive affirma affirmations is that you think positive, you think things and create the power of thought. You kind of create these things sometimes that sometimes that you want it so bad, it puts out blockages out to the universe where you can't make that connection. So you want to make that connection with mom and dad or those loved ones and you're wanting it so bad is that I think once you allow it saying, you know, okay, whenever they come around, whenever they give me the message, it will come around. But I think the more that we want it, the more that it puts up that blockage. Of That's kind of like life, connection. right? You want a job too much, you're not going to get it. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> did, you guys, did you guys sense all of these things that were within you from a very early age? Like, were you born with this or did it evolve as you went through time? I, I really evolved to the whole process with my work as a psychic medium. I never saw, felt, or hurt spirit. I, you know, was never like the kid in the sixth sense where Cole saw the dead people and things of that nature. And even now to this day, I really don't see dead people it's almost um images the way i see it it's like a big movie being played in my head so i'm clairsentience uh, where i actually would feel the things as well clairvoyance how i would, would see it as big moving being played in my head so my spiritual guides would pull out the information on my favorites and tell me how to describe this or talk about this and then i would actually hear things directly or indirectly of what they're trying to tell me and, then, so. and so how can we remove the blocks from ourselves to get more in touch with this world if we want to or how do you put them up it sounds like by trying too hard you block everything a absolutely and i think by daily meditation by being open uh knowing your surroundings where you're at every day and uh, making a thought or making that connection or making that acknowledgement to your loved ones. So if you're missing mom and dad, you're missing brother, sister, that loved one, just say hello to them each morning. The more that you bridge that connection, the more your vibrations builds up and they lower down their vibration. Between that, there's that connection. Mm -hmm. Once you build that connection, it's going to be a common thing for you to start having the signs, the signals, the dreams, um, uh, visitations. You're going to have all these different ways to make your connection. But I think it's uh, it's definitely a, uh, an, a knowing to know your loved ones are around you. And I think by meditation, working with chakras and and pay attention to those signs and signals like and, butterflies and birds if, if people oh. do get those you now know? what do you guys make of Gary Jansen because he's still on the phone and and he Gary you we can uh, talk to you now can, if you can hear us okay uh, Gary's stories you probably heard on the air in 2007 through 2008 was not a, a, a relative that he missed was you know these two people he had no relationship with and was mm -hmm. kind of scary what do you make of his ordeal well I, I think it's you know divine connection in a sense how things come together how the parents paranormal comes together, how we come together as an individual. Um, his story about the doorbell situation, I just actually had a client maybe about a month ago that had a similar situation where um, the doorbell kept on ringing and when it was, uh, I was talking, I believe you're a program director or your producer and she was talking about a, door a doorbell story so I figured it was kind of parallel and it was almost as a thought. She kept on waking up, she kept on hearing the doorbell and she figured, you know, it's, you know maybe it's electrical, maybe it's this, maybe that. So uh, during the reading this came up and I asked her, I go, I'm actually seeing a bell and she goes, um, yeah, the doorbell used to go off and everything. I go, is there a connection to Bell? It's like someone named Bell. Didn't click to her. Her mom's named Bella. 
Oh. To- totally. Very, it's very simple. Very simple. And some people miss those signs, signs <laughs> and signals. So I think it goes for all of us, you know. And you, Ramira, what do you think about D- uh, Gary's incident with these these ghosts in his house for about a year? Well, just a quick input on uh, the fact that he said, uh, you know, the foul language that's being used or whatnot. Uh, during the filming of this series from beyond, you we got cussed out a bunch of times, right, AJ? Absolutely. And I think what happens with, with Gary's situation, I, I think it's it's... It's it's pretty intense, you know, when when you when you notice it's there. So you agree with what he's saying? Absolutely. Gary, can yeah, exactly. you hear what do you think about what these guys are saying? They say you're right on right on target. Yeah, no, I mean everything that they're saying is 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 stuff that I've really come to believe. As I said, I was a skeptic for so many years, and just kind of through research and through, you know, really being in this for like the last three or four years. I mean, they're right on the money, um, you know, and the whole idea of. of of you know intention and blockages. You know, it's good to like have a thought. But if you obsess on a thought, if you, like, if, if you want your relative to come and you obsess about it, it's not going to happen. You, you send out the intention and then you just relax and you try to stop thinking. And I think so many of the problems that we suffer through today is because we overthink things. And, um, and those, think, those thoughts become obsessions and they can become blockages. So these guys are, you know, they sound great. So, Gary, do you really want to have more of these experiences or, or is, was that last thing the end for you? I mean, you know, are you trying to cultivate done, uh, this? It, for anything at home, um, what I'm really interested in is really, you know, looking at, you know, looking at the paranormal and, and researching the history. You know, there isn't, it's really tough because when you're dealing with this, we see, we live in a materialist kind of, we have this materialist worldview and, you know, and unless you have, you know, some really concrete data, which actually exists, if you look at the J.B. Rhine um, data, and he was a guy, a researcher out of Duke University. He has some really intense stuff about ESP and, and poltergeist that you can research, and there's really profound evidence about the existence of all these things. Okay, Gary, hold that thought. It's about research. Just a second, just a second. We have to take a quick break. Gary, don't don't go away. Gary Jansen, who's written A Holy a Ghost, is with us along with A.J. Barrera and Ramiro Ramirez from the great show that's on NBC. It's all about investigating Latino neighborhoods in Los Angeles from beyond, and they have all kinds of psychic abilities. We're going to find out what do you look for in your home if all of a sudden it feels like it may be haunted. Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, a very special version of Home Wizards continues after this on KFWB News Talk 980. What were you saying when you were doing a construction job? They had the evil eye? Yeah, I was remodeling a, a house out in Thousand Oaks and I demoed the ceiling and up in the attic someone had drawn an evil eye Ooh. and arrows pointing down to where you would stand in front of the sink. And and it freaked out the homeowners because they were very religious, right? So uh-huh. I I I really have not never ventured into this world, but I burned sage and I did what I thought would be appropriate to assuage their fears, mm-hmm. and apparently it worked and everything's fine. But Good. that's scary to see something. Well, like they that. say that construction can bring out ghosts. Say Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole here, Home Wizards, where we love to help you improve your home and improve your life. And every year, we love to devote the whole two hours to the whole idea of maybe your home might be haunted. And Gary Jansen has been joining us. Uh, He's on the line from New York. Uh, his home was haunted, and he's written the book called Holy Ghosts. Also with us in studio, A.J. Barrera and Ramiro Ramirez, who are psychic, medium, paranormal investigators and on the show From Beyond and NBC. And and so, Gary, uh, you are a Catholic, and A.J. and Ramiro also are Catholic. In fact, A.J. has a cross around his <laughs> neck. And so part of the book that you've written, Gary, is the whole notion of how you were raised. You aren't supposed to believe in ghosts. Right. I mean, you know, I grew up in the 70s and 80s, and um, you know, went to Catholic school for 12 years, and we never talked about ghosts. And I think, you know, uh, part, partly because you don't want to scare little kids, um, but, you know, I, I felt like in some ways that I was chipped out of kind of spiritual teaching, kind of going to Catholic school. I learned my math, and I learned how to, I think, you know, ethically, like, you know, you should live your life like this. But when it came to the spirit world, it wasn't something that they talked about. But there's a whole plethora of, 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 of doctrine and theology about angels and demons. Not too much on ghosts, um, but I was able to find some stuff. So the, the Church actually does believe in ghosts. They just don't talk about it all that much. Hmm. Uh, absolutely, and I think the fact is that when you come from a healthy skepticism attitude, but also a healthy part of your religion, if you understand religion and spirituality, they blend beautifully together if you just understand them both. And I think the fact of growing up as well in a devout Catholic family, a mom, my dad went to the whole school with the yard, uh, with um, schooling, Bible studies, and everything, and myself, you know, I came into this work like 
being a youth ministry and being involved with them and teaching kids about this work, but never talking about it. And when I really started um, opening about my work, people started fearing it. And I think with me, I was very fortunate as Gary, he wasn't fortunate to have that spiritual insight. And I was fortunate now because back what, 10 years ago, you know, it wasn't even that popular. Now, now it's all over the place, all radio shows, TV shows and everything. Oh, I know. So when I go to bed tonight, in fact, I think when Eric is home alone tonight, we're both going to sense this. I'm going to put the sheet over my head (laughs) because I'm going to remember all that we talked about and I'm going to somehow feel safe because I'm under a sheet. What is up with that? (laughs) Right? (laughs) And a baseball bat. Does that help or no? (laughs) I mean, Gary, do you still get afraid or or do you reach the point where, you know, really there shouldn't be any fear? Gary or AJ, anybody yeah, here? Yeah, for me, absolutely not. I, I don't fear the living. I don't. I actually, I don't fear the dead. I fear the living more so than anything else because of the living. You fear actually, the four or five is what you fear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> four or five, ten, one oh one. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I think the biggest part with this work is that I think if you're personally grounded and know what this work is all about and protect yourself with prayer, meditation, white light, and 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 know what you, what you're getting yourself into because I think if you're messing with something and tampering with something that you don't know, then mm-hmm. you attract this negative energy and you create this energy in your life as well. Like so the Ouija what, what board is. Are, some, what are some basic things we can do to protect ourselves in these situations and kind of get a better understanding? For, for, for me, and I'm going to speak up with my personal opinion. I'm, I'm sure Ramon can share his. I, I think mine is just daily meditation, um, positive thinking, creating what you want in your life. But again, don't obsess on it, what Gary was mentioning as well. Um, if we just move in our life in an everyday basis and focus what we really want and what we want to create and making those connections with our loved ones, we're going to get those connections. But again, I'm a huge meditation and prayer individual. Um, doesn't I don't doesn't matter what kind of prayer. If it's you know, Judaism, Buddhism, Christianity, as long as you make that connection, you're still making a connection with the higher source, with divine. But if you're all of a sudden alone, I mean, I don't mm-hmm. know what it is about when you're alone. It's almost as <laughs> scary right as opposed to having a buddy yeah <laughs> right <laughs> you're all alone and it seems to be scarier at night than the day like here we are it's still daylight and i'm not scared because i'm talking to you guys and i can see but if it were <laughs> nighttime i'd be afraid but if you're afraid there's something about that high anxiety right your heart starts to pump faster and you can have all the prayer and all the spirituality in the world but in that moment it's darn scary so romero do you ever get scared i mean you guys have checked out a lot of neighborhoods of la and different homes have you ever been frightened not so much frightened that I'm I'm scared of what I do itself. It's just the unseen, you know. Um, you don't know what these people practice in these homes, you know, whether they practice Wicca or witchcraft, whatever it is. Uh, we're walking in these homes, cold turkey, not knowing anything about these people. Um, there are cases in where we do walk into a location, there's something that's definitely a negative energy. And uh, during the filming of this uh, series, From Beyond, one of us three cast members, we were at a hospital here in East L.A., and one of us cast members got scratched, and we were able to document this with cameras, and it was pretty. Uh, it was a pretty intense moment. Yeah, and I think the fact is that when you're again, when you're open to it, you can say all the prayer and everything that you can have, and things like that can happen because I think you're vulnerable to it. And when you're very vulnerable, your energy is lower than what it should be, rather than raising your vibration to a higher level. So that connection, it's almost like your walls down, your barriers down, and it makes it easier for them to connect with those energies. And I think uh, same situation with those homeowners that you're mentioning, um, Eric, is that. Um, People walk into this area with fear, and I think sometimes when you fear it, and, and if you believe that you're going to protect it, you're going to save it, you're going to do everything you can, then that fear's not there, and you did the right thing. So it helps that energy so move forward. So I basically became a semi-professional ghost hunter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll put that on my resume. Hey, right. We're going to get you a new T-shirt. <laughs> right? right. Now, you know, I, I will tell you, from going into so many people's homes for the last 25 years, being a general contractor, I feel energy that is unfavorable, and I think it's the the clients or the homeowners. It may be it may be that or it may be the spirits that exist in that property. I, I don't know. I have never really analyzed it. But I do sense those things. So mm-hmm. I mean it clearly from an instinctive level it is there. There's it's, something it's, there. There's always sense. something. So what there, are yeah. the telltale signs? Gary, before we let you go, you've lived it, you've had a haunted home. What would you say are five signs that yes, you're not imagining things, your home is haunted? Well, I mean, I think that just uh, symptoms of a common haunting, I think, would be, you know, the odd noises, you know, the rappings, the scratchings, you know, sounds of, of shuffling feet, you know, it could be chills or temperature fluctuations, electrical anomalies, you know, objects could move, you could see something, you know, these are all things. And also just a general sense of, uneasy, of, of uneasiness. Now, all these things could be kind of rationalized away, but, but, um, but yeah, I think those are really kind of the telltale signs. 
Yeah, AJ, what do you guys think? I, I I totally agree with the apparition. And then there's the poltergeist thing, which takes it to a whole nother level. That that would <laughs> probably be Romero's part of it. He probably knows more about the work, but I, but I, I personally believe is that you have the the uh, electrical devices going off, temperature changes, and knocks, the smells bangs. like Eric's mom oh smells the cigar. Yeah, my uh, mom always smells my grandfather's old cigar that he used to smoke. And I would say you, old see, someone must hauntings, have passed away that right? used to smoke yeah, a that's lot. Him, yeah. And that yeah. and that's a trait. And they're going to be like imprints. You know, we're just like a fingerprint. Once we make a transition, we take those energies with us. So if we love to smoke down here we're gonna take the smoking energy with us mm -hmm. on the other side and still enjoy partying you know i hear a well. pack of cigarettes is about 67 <laughs> bucks up there so. <laughs> <laughs> and ramiro you've you've encountered poltergeists things that are moving in at will as crazy as it sounds yeah i've seen a lot of crazy stuff in my time um especially as an investigator myself uh, i'm the lead investigator of from beyond and i sage my whole production team whether it's the audio guy camera crew we sage before and after and even uh, when I investigate on my own, I end up coming home with these attachments that they call. Um, and right, because they can I, follow you home, just like the ride at Disneyland. They right. follow you home. <laughs> yeah, they right? do. And it, as crazy as it sounds, yeah, these attachments, uh, somehow some of them find their way inside my home sometimes. And um, just like you mentioned earlier, you know, under the blankets, you feel a lot more safe. Uh, I just feel... Do you, know, you also if, feel if, safer under the you blankets? You know what? Uh, just <laughs> as a kid, you know... Uh, <laughs> If my feet are hanging from the mattress, oh, I know. you know, I always no, you have to, can't have them you know, under. No, you've got to if, tuck them under. If they're no, if you're, they're hanging away, you know, off the mattress, yeah, yeah. I cannot sleep. And yeah, uh, there's been times where I actually or like your hand off to the side. Right. No, it's got to be under. Right, and they, <laughs> I've seen stuff move around inside my home. I, uh, I see it more as uh, they're trying to get my attention. Hey, yeah. I'm here. Well, let's say uh, AJ and uh, uh, Ramiro, your show is on Sundays. It's called From Beyond on NBC. What time is it on? 10 p.m. every Sunday night. You know, they can check it out. They can also go to moonthose.tv. That's M-U-N number two dot TV slash beyond. Check it all love out it. and check previews and, you know, behind the scenes clips and everything else. So. Love it. Love it. And Gary Jansen, your book is called Holy Ghosts. And we'll check out uh, your website as well. And, of course, the books at Amazon. Thanks, Gary. Thanks so much, guys. Up next, as we segue into hour two, are you scared yet, Eric? I'm not I'm, feeling... I'm, I'm not even... I'm going to go I'm to sleep not, tonight. Getting, no. well, you guys want to sleep over? <laughs> Get a lot of sage in the room. As we go into hour two, we're going to talk with some more Ghostbusters who aren't afraid. In fact, there, a couple of these guys are stuntmen in movies like Friday the 13th. And yet, they also hunt for ghosts. This is Home Wizards, hour two. Come on your way next on KFWB News Talk 980.